Okay, final part, part three. So, I don't know if you can see this. Can you see that? I'm gonna explain it. So they showed me a lunchbox. Now I wanted to title this lunchbox, but they showed me a lunchbox. And inside the lunchbox, as most of you know, especially the mums out there with children and teacher friends of mine, you open the lunchbox and there's all different compartments. Basically they showed me, for me, my lunchbox, there was a sandwich. There was um, a container of tiny teddies. There was a little container of grapes. There was a little container of twiggy sticks. And there was a little long rectangle container full of cheese and crackers, okay? And each of those components represented an element and a phase of my life. So for example, the sandwich, that was me. I would say it was meat and salad, okay, ham and salad. I was the meat. So Kelly was the meat, the essence of me, and the feelings, the feelings were my trauma. So all the things that I was experiencing um, in my early childhood and, and growing up, the, that was the feeling. The disease of Crohn's disease and the aches and the pains and the skin and the, and the headaches, that was the feeling as well. Put those all together and that was the sandwich, okay? Then in the tiny teddy compartment, was my creativity and self-expression. If I have a tiny teddy, I absolutely feel fantastic. It's sugar, it feels great. So for me, that was my creativity and expression. Whenever I dived into those things, those things that I loved and resonated, it always made me feel fantastic. The grapes, yeah, they're good for us. So for me, spirit showed me that it was about being physical. So that includes movement and dance and being out with friends and keeping myself fulfilled in a nourishing way. The twiggy sticks. Spirit showed me that that was all to do with my manifestation. So I'm not joking when I say this and I'm not being dramatic. Throughout high school and the friends of mine in my group of friends, they I hope they can remember me doing this. I would talk about it, I would feel it, I would see it. I'm going to get into acting school when I finish year 12. I'm going to be an actor, I'm going to be a singer, I'm going to be a dancer. I literally threw my whole self into those thoughts and those feelings and I manifested that. I was a teenager from the Barossa Valley and I auditioned um, at a couple of... Uh, acting schools in Adelaide, Melbourne, and I got into one in Ballarat, and I was there for three years, and I studied acting in all the facets of that. And then when I finished that, I was lucky enough to get an agent, and when I look back at that time, I literally created that through pure determination and commitment. This is what I want, this is how I see it going, and I'm going to make it happen because I believe in myself creating that for me. Which leads me to the last section of the lunchbox, the cheese and crackers. Now, if you tie the sandwich, the tiny teddies, the grapes, the twiggy sticks, you've had all that and you feel nice and full, digest that, what's next? Okay, so you go home, you'll have afternoon tea or perhaps you'll have dinner, whatever it might be. For me, because I'd done all that stuff, I'd, I'd, I'd found what my creativity was, I put my heart and soul into it. I looked after my body in terms of being active and I listened to it. And then I spoke about it, I felt it and I visualised it. It led me down the career path of becoming an actor. And I was an actor for a while and I loved it. But looking back, it taught me to become the most incredibly expressive teacher. It taught me so many things about teaching in a career I've now been in for nine years that gave me the tools and the techniques to do group times and get up in, in front of families and do parent ed nights and all these things. Everything we do, there's always a reason for it and it does eventually lead you down a path of, of contempt, like you're content. So, what are your greatest loves? What do you love to do? What makes you feel alive? What gives you goosebumps? What do you see yourself and feel yourself always talking about and you get really excited? A really cool tip from Spirit. Oh, random here. A really cool tip from Spirit to sort of identify what it is that your soul is 
longing to do, you f you'll find yourself, you just can't shut up about whatever it is. Just say it's hairdressing, for example. When you talk about hairdressing, when you talk about hair and color and cutting and designing, that's part of your soul's purpose. Your soul is craving for you to do that. Lots of energy, lots of um, momentum. When you find yourself being like that, that is a sure sign that that is part of your soul's purpose here in this lifetime and for you to activate that in your life in some shape or form. Make sure that whatever it is that you want to create in your life, perhaps it's a career change, it's a new self-care routine every morning to allow you to feel better about yourself and, and, and really nourish your body in a really well-being manner, whether it's going to the gym, waking up early, eating better, whatever it is for you, feel it, see it, think it. Our thoughts create our reality. Our thoughts create our reality. Everything that you think is going to manifest itself out there, out here. I'll go into it later. What's been in your sandwich? What's been in your sandwich? Who are you? Do you know who you are and what you want out of this incredible life? You're here in the now. You're here watching this. What do you want out of your life to make you absolutely electrified, to make you go to sleep at night, close your eyes, and you've just got the biggest smile on your face because you're excited for the next day to come and you're grateful for the day that's been. Think about it. I hope this resonates with you in some shape or form. I feel like that's going to be my logo or some, some shape or form. I hope you resonate with this. Please leave me any questions, any comments. I would love to see what you're thinking. I feel like there's a lot of you out there at the moment that are pretty much doing the same thing I'm doing in terms of in the midst of changing directions, and that's okay. However, it is fucking scary, and it's petrifying, and if it was easy, everybody would be doing it, but you're not everybody, and I'm so glad to call you a friend and a dear viewer, and I love and appreciate you very much. Stay cool, amigo. It's very hot outside, especially in Melbourne. Take care. Mwah. Lots of love. Ciao.